Hello and welcome. Today we're going to open up those hips. So let's begin standing. You're going to bend both knees two inches and take your left leg and you trace the left foot in front of you out to the side and back behind. Like you're making this wonderful crazy eight shape. A little bit of hip flossing is what I call it. So big swish in the front and then to the side. Now you can always hold on to something to help you here as you open those hips. Noticing how you rotate thigh in and out. Good. Left foot comes down, bend your left knee, and now right leg. You're gonna rotate right thigh in and back. Just moving your thigh and hip in such a way that your foot ends up creating this beautiful infinity symbol or crazy eight on the floor. <laughs> One more breath here. Hmm. <laughs> Simple movement to do. Okay, coming to the top of your sticky mat, and if you have blocks, have them nearby. Hands and Anjali. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And on the exhale, forward fold. Hands to the ground, or hands to your blocks, or even hands to a chair. But give yourself a moment with strong legs, and make sure that you're not feeling this in the mid back, you know, if you find yourself rounding more from the back, bend your knees and place your hands on to height. Hmm. Now from here, step right leg back, high lunge. The toes spreading. In the high lunge, a couple things I want you to focus on. Number one, alignment. The left foot, you want to make sure from the center of the ankle to the second toe that you're foot, that imaginary line is pointing forward. The back leg, lift that right inner thigh an inch higher so that your fingers don't feel so squished. <laughs> and then keeping your hips square to the front, lengthen from the belly out through the head and from the belly back through <laughs> that right arch. You're doing fabulous because high lunges are sneaky. They can be very intense. On the inhale, step forward, forward bend. Hmm. Step left leg back, high lunge. Now another aspect here is that the feet are hip distance wide. Making the feet hip distance wide makes it friendlier. What also makes it friendlier, blocks. <laughs> you place the blocks under the hands, lined up with the outer right ankle. The beauty of the blocks is that you can have your arms steady and strong and still soften between the shoulder blades, not feel so squished in the upper back and neck. Hmm. <laughs> so on the last deep breath here as you wrap the left hip forward and you tack your right hip back, lengthen from the belly to the head, from the belly back through the left arch. We're gonna open up the front of the thighs, the hips, the outer hips, and have a wonderful opportunity to let go of the stress that's hiding there. On the inhale, lift your hips, step forward, forward bend. Now if you don't have blocks at home and the high lunges are challenging, you can always have your hands on a seat sedge or the couch, that's an opportunity or even like a coffee table, something you could slide your toes under. That way you don't have to have your hands too far in front of you. Step right leg back, high lunge. Okay, here's where things start to get silly. And here's where a pair of blocks makes it a lot nicer. So with hands on blocks, if you have them, lift your hips two inches and pivot onto the big toe side of your right foot. You're really spreading your toes keeping the pinky toe side of the right foot lifted. And you're drawing from pinky toe to outer right knee, getting those muscles toned. Then tack the left hip back, so the hips are a little more square to the front of your sticky mat. You're lengthening from the belly out through the right foot, from the belly out through the crown, trying to make the leg bones as long as the muscles are toned. <laughs> And I'll explain that. On the inhale, lift your hips, unwind your back foot, step forward, 
Forward bend. Step left leg back, high lunge. So this is possible to do without the blocks. It just depends on where you're, where you're hiding or holding the most tension. You lift your hips two inches, pivot onto the big toe side of the left foot. Your toes are working, spreading those pinky toes and engaging from the left pinky toe to the outer knee. You tack the right hip back and as the feet press down, isometrically draw the feet towards one another. So the muscles are engaged and toned, meaning you're drawing from the feet all the way up to the hips. So the muscles hug the bone. And as much as the muscles engage and hug the bone, lengthen from the belly out through the crown of the head, from the belly back through the left foot. Can you feel this in the left inner thigh? <laughs> or maybe somewhere in the right? Inhale, lift your hips, unwind the back leg, step forward, breathe. Hmm. It's much tougher than it looks. Okay, final silly variation. Step right leg back, high lunge. Now this one is very nice to have blocks for, or again, a seat set where you scoot the seat up and it's just over your toes. From here, lift your hips two inches. Pivot onto the pinky toe side of the right foot. Yes, you heard me, <laughs> it's a little strange, right? I'm gonna rotate your right thigh in, right thigh and hip, so your right toes face the left edge of your sticky mat. <laughs> you can keep the left leg bent to that 90 degrees, or over time, Begin to stretch your left leg a little straighter. The hips lifting, the mound of the left big toe anchoring down. And for some of you guys, you won't need to use the blocks. You can keep the fingers on the floor. This you'll be feeling in the front left hip crease most likely. Maybe back of the leg, hamstring, calf. <laughs> on the inhale, bend your front knee a little bit. Unwind the back leg, rock back to push forward. Forward bend, oh, breathe. When you get into the hips, the breath work is so important because if we're holding our breath, we won't be able to release that tension and tightness that's hiding there. Hmm. Step left leg back, high lunge. So again, you can use the box or you can skip them. You're gonna lift the hips two inches, pivot onto the pinky toe side of your left foot. So your toes are pointing to the right side of the sticky mat. Now you might find that the left outer heel isn't willing to come to the floor, that's okay. If this doesn't work for you, just stay in the high lunge. You're in this position, tacking your outer right hip back, maybe. You lift the hips, one inch, two inches, you stretch your right leg a little straighter. Your hands can be on blocks or on a chair's edge. Hmm. Or even a countertop, you can do this with your hands on the edge of your kitchen counter. And then on the exhale, bend the front leg, unwind the back foot. This time step back to downward facing dog. Hmm, should feel a lot friendlier. Deep breath. <laughs> and little sighs are good too. Helps just to release anything that's pent up within your heart. Good or bad, helpful or not helpful. And then from the downward facing dog, we're gonna go to a high lunge. Left leg leads. You lift your left leg and with a big kick, Swing the foot between the hands, high lunge. Now swivel your back foot flat and you're going to have the feet hip distance wide. So heel toe walk your left foot about two inches to the left. As the four corners of the feet press down, wrap the right hip forward, tack the left hip back. Now all of the lunge work we did has prepared us for warrior one. So root through the left heel, Scoop your tailbone, tone your tummy, and lift the chest. <laughs> you got it. 
From here, extend the arms alongside the ears. The outer edge of that right foot is rooting into the earth. And you're lowering through the left thigh, bringing left thigh parallel to the floor. One deep breath. <laughs> you're doing great. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back, downward dog. Breathe. Right leg lifts. And with a big kick, swing the foot forward between the hands. Widen your right foot about two inches to the right. Swivel the back foot flat. Wrap the left hip forward and tack your right hip back. So the right kneecap is pointing in the same direction as pinky toe and ring toe on that right foot. Root through the right heel, scoop your tailbone, lift the chest. Good. Inhale, arms sweep up alongside the ears and you breathe. Deep, steady breath. Good. Wonderful work because Warrior One is a big hip opener. One last breath. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back, downward facing dog. A deep breath here. I'm gonna do that one more time. Left leg lifts, big kick, swing the foot forward, widen it two inches to left, back foot swivels flat. Inhale, scoop tailbone, sweep arms up, go right into warrior one. Second round should be a lot friendlier. The hips are more open. They know what's coming. You're keeping right hip wrapped forward, left outer hip tacked back. So the left knee is pointing forward. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back. Downward dog. <laughs> Last one. Lift your right leg high. Swing the foot forward, big kick. Widen the right foot three inches. Swivel the back foot flat. Inhale, scoop the tailbone, tone the belly, and extend the arms alongside the ears. Beautiful work. Hmm. Warrior one. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back. Downward facing dog. And from downward dog, we're going to go into pigeon prep. Lift the left leg high to the sky and with a big swing, bring left knee wide and down to the floor. So the left knee is a little wider than the wrist. The thigh is about a 45 degree angle to the torso. And you wiggle your right leg back as far as it's willing to go. Now keep the right toes curled under for balance and muscle tone. You're going to tack Left outer hip back, and as the knees press into the floor, isometrically draw them towards one another. You press the left toenails down towards the sticky mat so you get a great arch in the left foot. And then bring your hands forward two hand lengths towards the top of the sticky mat. You're gonna keep the muscles engaged in the legs. Press the hands down into the floor and push the floor away from you so that those thighs anchor back into the hip socket. From here, draw the lower belly in and lower down to the elbows. <laughs> One more deep breath in our wonderful pigeon. And on the inhale, plant the hands, lift up and back, downward facing dog. Okay, right leg. Right leg lifts, big kick, swing that thigh forward and a little wide. Wiggle the left leg back as far as it's willing to go. Now if any time, if there's knee pain, you're gonna bring your right knee more in line with your hip, like a direct extension, and that'll be less outer hip work. But if the knee's okay here, keep the leg a little wide. The right toenails press down towards the floor. Isometrically draw the knees towards each other. And hands come to the floor and they press down and they push the floor away. 
one deep breath. <laughs> if you're doing well here, keep your tummy toned, lower down to the elbows. Remember, pigeon prep is never a passive pose, but we are engaged, meaning the knees are pressing into the floor firmly. You're isometrically drawing them towards each other. You're making the spine long from tailbone to crown and from belly back out through that left foot. On the exhale, plant the hands, lift up and back, downward dog. And from downward dog, child's pose. Big toes together, knees wide, and just stack the hands. Forehead resting on the hands, three breaths. Imagining you have a little eject button right on the forehead. And you can eject and release any of the thoughts that aren't serving you. And on the inhalation, imagine a beautiful golden light wash over the whole body. And on the next inhale, slowly come up through seated. If you have time for a little Shavasana, please feel free to add it in. Otherwise, thank you so much for playing yoga with me today. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.